You've now tuned in to the Drawing Board Podcast, a powerful, thought-provoking discussion where we talk about family, relationships, ministry, community, and career. Let's see what exciting guests we have on our show today. Welcome to the Drawing Board Podcast. This is the founder and host, Andre Ebron. You know how we do it every single week, bringing you quality information from quality guests. And we can you believe we are in the middle of January already? It seems like I was just telling you Happy New Year, but tonight, 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 I hope you're ready to get 1% better. I hope you're ready to join uh, Keon Clinton as he leads you into your destiny and your greatness. I know tonight we're going to have a word of, par- of prayer. It's going to be prophetic. It's going to be insightful. It's going to be hilarious. We're going to have a lot of fun. Welcome, my brother. And, of course, one of the members of of the oldest and coldest fraternities yes, known to man, yes, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity <laughs> Incorporated. Yes, Shout sir. out. Welcome to the show, my brother, Keon Clinton. And I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. It's truly an honor. You yes, know, sir. Um, I love everything that you've been doing. It's truly uh, God's divine order for us to be here in this room today. So I look forward to the conversation. Let's make some magic today, man. Absolutely. Man, we have been trying to make this happen now for about a year, and you yes. just booked all over the world. So <laughs> I'm glad that you were able to come out tonight. Yes, sir. So I know that tons of people know you, but I want to go ahead and break down for them who Keon Clinton is. So your bio says, and of course you need to fill in the gaps, good brother. Yes, sir. But your bio says, born and raised in the infamous zip code 48205. Yes, now, sir. if somebody says 48205, you know they are not <laughs> from the D, all right? So yes, 48205, sir. Detroit, Michigan, which is known as one of the most dangerous cities in the world. Keon Clinton is a proud product of his environment, and he is not a statistic. He received his Bachelor's of Science from Michigan State University in Electrical Engineering and is currently working for a multi-billion dollar company, which also, while also, excuse me, pursuing his education further to obtain his master's degree in business administration. His philanthropic character has led him on a journey to invest in youth advancement all over the world which ultimately inspired the founding of his very own business, FAMILY. Now, FAMILY is an acronym that stands for Forget About Me, I Love You. Yes, sir. He is an author, motivational speaker, life coach, mentor, philanthropist, and most importantly, a servant of the Lord. Here's his mission. Listen in. Come close. He says, my mission in life is to always be a blessing to others no matter what you are doing in life. And standing by this, Keon truly believes that we must sacrifice our own self-gratification for the success of others. Yes, hey, sir. man, sounds like a servant leader to me, That's brother. That's it. Listen, when you serve, you win. All right. That's how I live my life. When you serve people, you see them rejoicing, you see them happy, you give them the things that they want, and then in return, just seeing them being successful, that's enough for me. You know, that, that's how I live my life. And it's been taking me all over the world with that mentality. So, Absolutely. So that needs to be on the shirt, man. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah when, <laughs> when you serve, you win. That's it, right all there. Right? So, yeah, we need to get that on the shirt, <laughs> yes, man. Sir. But talk to me about it, man. You're an author of yes. the book Healing the Living Dead. Yes. Break down for me. What does that mean? Yeah, so um, healing the living dead happens at a shifty from a morgue mentality to a Forbes mentality. Okay. And there's a lot of people who are physically alive, but mentally and morally dead. Mm. You know, they're, they're alive, but they're not living. Okay. You know, they're just existing, you know, walking around with no purpose and agenda. And I was that same guy, you know, born and raised in 4205. Yes, and sir. I got to a place to where I didn't care whether I lived or died. You know, single parent mom raising four boys, drugs, violence, gangs. I was introduced to that at the age of nine. And, excuse me, I fell in love with it because I was a student of the game. That's all I knew. And uh, although I was I was smart, I didn't feel like I was smart. You know, I would get 3.5s and 4.0s, and I would just be like, well, you know, it's, it's, Seems pretty normal if you pay attention to the teacher, not thinking. But all I knew how to do was devalue myself. And I, I remember it was my 11th grade year. I had a 3.89 GPA, and they were saying, where do you want to go to college? I said, I never thought about going to college. You know, my thing was to go back into the streets 
and do what I seen my my father do, do what I seen my brothers do, do what I knew what I knew how to do and I was the living dead. I was just alive and then at one point in my life uh, God started talking to me and it scared me because I didn't know what voice it was. I just knew it wasn't mine anymore. Right. And um I said I'm calling you to lead the masses and to speak my name across the nation. And I was like, yeah, I'm good on that calling. You right, know? Right. Uh, listen, we're going to put you on call <laughs> you, waiting, you know, Lord. Uh, hold point, on right quick, Lord. I, I'd rather be doing other things. And um, right. he he told me that. I would, I'll never forget it. He he told me that when I was 16. And uh, I was like, okay. I ignored it. And then uh, I went to Michigan State. My mom forced me to fill out one college application to Michigan State University. And I did it three weeks after the deadline on purpose so I can get denied and go to the streets. All right. But God had a calling for my life, man. He they did. accepted me, and yes, I was sir. mad about it. Oh, man. So listen, the door that the Lord has opened, yeah. no man can shut. <laughs> yes, sir. Not even you. <laughs> Not even you. Right. And, uh I went to Michigan State University out nervous, scared, you know, because no one in my family ever went to a big time school at all. So for me, it was different. That was my first time leaving on the east side of Detroit. So going to the Michigan State, a PWI, 50,000 people, it was just like, wow. Um, I was a culture shock. I was just like, everything that I believed was challenged in that moment. Right. And, uh, People were nice. The atmosphere was clean. I, I was just like, this is new. And then I, I was there for seven years. You know, I told my mom, I said, I'm never coming home until one, I become a man. Right. And two, I find my purpose in life. And that was family. You know, my purpose is like, forget about me. I love you. You right. know, that's what I found in Michigan State for those seven years. Man, changed my life forever. So listen, man, somebody might be listening right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I want you to unpack for me, if you could, yeah. like that moment when God began to speak to you. Yeah. Like, because I, I, I just want you to set the stage for me, man. Where yeah. were you? What was happening? Yeah. Like, when you heard the voice, was it an impression in your heart? Was it audible? Like, break that down <laughs> for me. Man, I, I was I was on a corner, man, to be honest with you. I was uh, doing some things with friends at the time, and I heard a voice say, are you ready? And I, I'm looking around like, ain't nobody talking to me. You know what I'm seeing? My guys, they're not speaking. Right. And they said, are you ready? And they said it again. I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going on. I'm thinking I'm tripping at this point. Right. Um, because I, my, my auntie forced us to go to church when I was younger and uh, didn't want to go. But after a while, it became fun. Right. We started learning about the Bible and all this stuff. And I'm, I don't really know much about God, but this seems cool. Right. And uh, so I knew God was real at the time, but I didn't have a, a, a great connection with him, if you will. Um, I wasn't intentional with my relationship with God. And when he told me that, I was like, OK. And then I went to sleep that night and uh, he showed me a, a vision of me speaking in front of millions of people. I woke up at like four in the morning, sweating profusely, nervous, scared. I'm running out, making sure there ain't nobody breaking in the house. And I just couldn't believe it. And he kept talking to me. He said, I'm calling you. He said, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you to speak. I'm going to use you. And at this point, public speaking, that was my biggest fear in the world. So I'm like, this don't even make sense. Right. So I'm in conflicting with myself because I didn't know it was really God until he showed me the vision of me speaking in front of people. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. And it was messing with me because I couldn't really tell anybody. Right. Because, you know, I'm, I'm in a hood. I'm tough. You know, I'm that guy where people respect it. And it was like, how can I come tell you, hey, listen, God showing me some stuff about speaking. So I was nervous. I was conflicted. I was confused. I didn't know how to feel at first. And, and then when I went to Michigan State again, he told me at the age of 21, he said, are you ready? Same voice, right. same movement. And at that time, I'm like, oh. I knew it was him again. I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, no, right. I'm not ready. And, and I told him, I said, I'm not ready. And after that, I lost my car. I got an eviction notice. I got dropped from my classes. And I was in a position where I was looking up and I was like, God, I know you're punishing me for not being obedient. Yeah. But I'm still not ready. Right. I still told him, I'm, I'm still not. So I'm going to just keep fighting you until, and then at the age of 25, I remember I graduated from Michigan State University. I was there for seven years. Right. I, leave, I left there. I went to Indiana. And then he said, are you ready? Now, what part of Indiana? Uh, Benton Harbor, Indiana. Oh, yeah, I know Benton Harbor. Yeah, and, and, man, yeah. I was Michigan State seven years. Right. I was the most popular dude at Michigan State. I went to Benton Harbor, Indiana, and became invisible within nine days. No family, no friends. Alpha didn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it didn't right. matter out there. Right. And, um, you know, and Benton Harbor is, is just industrialization. It's not a lot of civilization out there. So I was in a place where I was isolated. 
I was, oh man, I was depressed. I was, I was frustrated because I realized I was living for other people. Right. I went home. I bought three whiteboards, goals, purpose, vision, and I couldn't write none for two months because I didn't know who I was. Mm. I was crying every day. I was frustrated. I'm like, what is going on with me? I just, at Michigan State, I had family. I was alpha. I was, and now I'm like, but what is key I want to be? Who do you want to be? And I couldn't figure it out. And God started talking to me. All right. He said, are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, and I'm like, oh. I'm like, God, I tried this for 25 years my way. Now I think it's time. Because all it did was got me to my on my knees looking Full up to circle. you. Right. And, and when I accepted that, I was in Ben Harbor for nine nine months. I got a job at DTE coming back home 2016. And on my way home, it all made sense. He said, Keon, what else happened in nine months? I'm like, I don't know. He said, a mother gives birth to a child. Yes. He said, I was birthing you for, he, I was preparing you. I was birthing you for what I'm preparing you for when you get back home to Detroit. And in that first year when I came home, I did 40 speaking engagements, part-time. Right. I'm like, oh, man, this is real. Right, watch this, though. <laughs> the question is, are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, so, yeah, and that so was listen, it. man. Hey, listen, speak to the people, man. Allow God to use you. Yes. Somebody might be in that same position. Uh, you know, God, they have a calling on their yes. life. They may not know the direction for which they are to go. They Absolutely. may uh, be in an environment that doesn't support the vision that God has given them. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Let God use you. Absolutely. Um, Proverbs 3 and 5, lean not on your own understanding. And I always tell people that because at that moment where understanding stops working, faith has to kick in. All right. And, and a lot of people are in a position now to where this is what God does. I believe he gives you the end goal or he gives you the path. Okay. He never gives you both. Never gives you both. Right? Because then you wouldn't need God. You would right. So wherever you are, if you can see the vision or if you just know what's the path you're on, then you, you're in a good place. You know, and also an, an, another thing I tell people is whatever it is you're going through, understand that deliverance is on the other side. It's okay. it's impossible physically, literally, figuratively to have a breakthrough without going through something. Absolutely. And a lot of people want the breakthrough, but they don't want to go through what they got to go through to get to it. And so, so, wait, so wait a minute. So people want the breakthrough. Yeah. But they don't want to go. Through they don't want to go through nothing. Right. Right. And it's like, well, you know, you, you're a seed. You ask God to grow. So he sent the rain. But what comes with the rain? The mud. That's Absolutely. the ugly stuff. Yeah. Right. Like you, But that's also the fertilizing part of it. And it's like so when you're in a position now to where he's like, I'm trying to figure out my next step. God gave us all intuition. He also gave us all discernment. That's right. And a lot of times I believe God has shown each and every one of us what we should be doing. Maybe we're just not paying attention. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> like that's a stop sign on the corner for a reason. There's yeah. a yield sign on the corner for every reason. We got stoplights for God has given us all the signs. But sometimes we like to get in our own way. We like to add confusion to God's clarity. So mm -hmm. I always tell people, if you really want to hear and see something from God, isolate yourself. You know, even in the Bible, Jesus did. He had 12 homies. He did. But he, he had three he that was that was room. real yeah. close. Oh, yeah. Peter, so James, he, and John. He went to a yeah. certain place with the 12. He said, listen, I'm going to take the three with me. Yeah. And he went to a certain place with them. And then he told them, three, I have to go alone. So at some point in your life, you have to get isolated to hear from God because we are always like, I want to be successful. I want my friends to be on. I want my family. That's great. But when God has a message for you, sometimes you got to just isolate yourself. So I would tell anybody, if you're in a space where you feel like you're not hearing God, isolate yourself and go into that worship place and just allow him to talk to you. And sometimes worshiping and praying is just like listening. Absolutely. Like God talk to me. Right. And he'll show you what he has to show you, you know. Yeah. The most powerful moments in prayer are not the times when you're talking. Yeah. So, that's good. yeah. So, you know, you know, the what that does is that puts you in the focus to hear God. Absolutely. Yeah, so when you're declaring <laughs> his word, like he's using you as an instrument. Yes. But if you, I've never heard anybody get revelation uh, while speaking. Yeah. Now, I know the Holy Spirit can come in and bring revelation, Absolutely. like people preaching or sharing Agreed. things. But I'm talking about like life direction shifting moments. Yeah come in moments of silence. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You, so, you, you, don't, yeah. you don't learn a lesson talking to the teacher. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> and that's, and it that's right good, there. man. So look, if we had to just, in the, what we've shared right now, somebody yes. can take this and begin to build the life that God has yeah. designed for them. So listening to you, man, like, do, do this is what I'm asking the audience. Like, do you have the courage yeah. to allow God to lead you to your true self? Absolutely. So when God showed you, you speaking on the, the yeah. platform, are you speaking to the nations? Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, that is who you really are. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And in the moment, <laughs> it's one of those things like, uh, I got, I see where I am. Yep. Like, 
and I might even have a hunger for that, mm -hmm. but it's so different than who I currently am. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you and, and, you know, people say God doesn't call a qualifier. He qualifies the call. Absolutely. And, and in that moment was where at 16, I, I understood. He also been leading me to Moses. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Moses was the exact same way. Like, hold on, God. Is, is that your guy? That's it. Okay. That, oh, man, right. that, that's my guy. And it's like, right. because Moses is like, you know, I, I talk different. You know, I got a lisp. I, I don't really. And it's okay, though. I'm going to use you. And, and, and what I've learned is when you understand my, my favorite Bible verse, Ephesians 4, 1. Okay. Live a lifestyle worthy of the, of the calling that you receive. That's yes, very, that's powerful right there. That's right. Right. Because it, when you, when you break it down and you understand it into its totality, it's like, first off, you have to live this thing every day. Yeah. Worthy of the, you have to understand your worth mm -hmm. of the calling who comes from a person that know you better than you know yourself. That's right. And then you have to receive it. That's what I live my life on. And with Moses, like the people were at the top of the mountain for 40 years. Yeah. Only the, the trip was 11 days to the That's promised right. land. Yes, sir. So when you're disobedient, when, when you stun your own growth, when you're saying not yet, God, when you're trying to delay, it's like, OK, well, you sit here for 40 years. And then when you say yes, that was it. 40 engagements in, in the first year, it blew my mind. And I'm like, OK, God, I told him, I said, if you want me to do this, prove it. Prove. I'm from the hood. You got you got to prove you gotta, things yeah, to me, right? I, I, yeah. I understand. Let <laughs> so, me see. Hold on. Yeah, let's watch how this play out. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right. And it was like, okay, God, I understand that you're real. I right. understand that. But but it was 40 engagements. They were all free. But for me, I was just planting the seed. Absolutely. Because I was still doing engineering full time. And and then this year, Mar last year, March, I was like, God, I'm ready to do this full time. I'm ready to walk in my true calling and, and being an international speaker and an author and a war winning bodybuilder, founder of my nonprofit. All the things, there's nothing greater than speaking because that's what God told me to do. It's my element. I can feel the difference. I love the boot camps. I love the, being an author. I love it. But when I'm speaking, the way God used me is totally different. And that's the importance of walking in your true calling that God has ordained in your life. Right. So this is for all the young fellas that think you just got a, a smooth tongue, you're yeah. slick with it, mm -hmm. you know, you got some vocal gifting. <laughs> like God wants, I know you're using it for all of the wrong reasons yes. right now, you know, <laughs> and you just think that you're able to talk your way in and out of situations. Yep. And you got two living examples yeah, sitting before absolutely. you. That God will take and cultivate that gift and he'll use it for his glory. Absolutely. So, man, talk to me now. You know, these award winning bodybuilding, yeah. man. Yes, sir. When I saw you on, you know, uh, I was going through your, your Instagram and mm -hmm. Facebook and I saw these pictures of you posing like this, I said, man, this guy almost looked yeah. like me. <laughs> no, no, but uh, man, I saw this transformation. Yes. And uh, what what immediately came into my spirit, man, is that uh, where you were and where you ended up were just yeah. decisions away. Absolutely. And so, man, talk to me about the process, man. Yeah. Like, how did how do you do this? You know, how how did you you know go from this to that? Absolutely. And then now you're leading other people into yeah. health and wellness. Like, talk absolutely. To me, man. And and um. The, the truth is, man, the first time I, I got out the shower and just so happened to look in a thing called a mirror. Right. And I said, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> now, imagine where you have to be to say ugh to yourself. Right, right. And, and in that moment, I was like, wow, I can't believe I let myself go. I wasn't in the best place of my life. I'm like, you know what? I want to look how I feel. Right. Because at the time, I, I, I felt really good about myself. Yeah. But I didn't look how I felt. And it was like, you know what? Let me do something. And I went to the gym, I tried it, and it didn't work. You know, I just, but I went to the gym, and I was lifting weights, and I was eating what I wanted. And I'm like, nah, this, this just didn't work. So I was like, okay, you know, you become this public figure. You're about to be in front of people, you know. Protect the kingdom. Right. Right? Protect the kingdom at all costs. And, and that doesn't mean being a war with a bodybuilder, but, but be healthy enough to fulfill God's mission. So for me, it was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to give it my all. Okay. I'm going to study. I'm going to do my research. I'm going to even get a trainer because I, I tried it myself and it didn't work. And one of my trainers, he said, what's your goal? I said, man, honestly, I, I just want to look better. That was it. Right. And then I got in it and my trainer was a bodybuilder. And then two months, I, I lost like 25 pounds. But I was in the gym every, I was in the gym four hours a day, six days a week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's, I, that's so, commitment. Yeah. So yeah, I tell right. people, I say, listen, my journey is is going to be different because everybody, one, probably don't have four hours to give to a gym, but two, even if they did, they probably don't have the mental discipline to put four hours in. But I was like, I need to get this off me. I need a crazy transformation. When I reintroduce myself to the world, 
it'll be totally different. Right. And then two months in, he was like, you ever thought about bodybuilding? You, know, you got a real nice frame on you. I'm like, not really, but I'm looking at the walls, and it's all these guys that just look great. I'm like, I want to look like that. Right. You know, I, I don't care about body, but I just want to look like that because that is a certain level of discipline and confidence that I want for my life. And then two more months, man, I was able to lose about another 30 to 40 pounds. I lost like 55 pounds in four months. Wow. I stood on stage for the first time. I won second place at the time. Um, but for me, it was like when you go to the extreme on anything you do, no matter where you land, you'll be satisfied. Right. To the, I mean to the extreme. A lot of people don't go to the extreme. Four months of hardcore discipline, diet, nutrition, training, it was the hardest, one of the hardest things I ever had put my body through. And But when I done it, when I was on that stage, like, man, discipline, first off, to go through four months of, of that type of training. Absolutely. And then you got to have a lot of confidence to stand in front of three, 400 people in a, in, in a Speedo. In a Speedo. And, right? you know? yeah, in a Speedo. And <laughs> hey, listen, in my mind, I'm thinking you like, allow me to reintroduce myself. Yeah, no. My name is Keon. <laughs> and, that, and that was it, man. And it right. was just like, but when I when I got done, that's when the attraction, you know, more people, how God anointing on your life work is so beautiful because I had no idea to start doing mega boot camps. Right. To, to have 40 ambassadors all over the world. Just, wow. I, I never thought to, to be training people, to be transforming people, my clients' transformation. Circle. That was never my goal. But when because of what I did, then God started showing me things. Yeah. He said, I told you to speak my name. I told you, to, so I'm still doing hit ministry, right? Because you know, minister means to serve. So we, we're all ministers if we're serving. So even through my fitness, it's like I'm transforming people mentally. We're mm -hmm. talking about God. I'm leading them closer to 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 the kingdom. It's like, oh man, I see what you're doing here, God. And then it's like most people they struggle. They struggle right. with the fitness. They do. And yeah. for me to know it so well and to teach it, it's like, oh well, why not? Because if your personal health is intact then your business health will be intact. Absolutely. And that's what that's what that's what this is all about for me. It's like I want everybody to live and be healthy and I do everything I can from the healthy side of things and making sure they do just that. Oh man, that's excellent. Listen, I, I watch, you know, and I admire the work that you're doing. Thank you, man. And here's what I find interesting, man, out of what you're sharing from that moment is that your personal discipline mm -hmm actually has the potential to change the lives of everybody who comes That's in touch it. with you. Yes, sir. And so yep. when we're sitting here talking and you're listening, and, hey, I'm with you because I got a Pepsi and a water. So, listen, <laughs> I, I told you, hey, listen, but sitting here with the 1% better, you know, execution coach. Yes, sir. Uh, but here's what you got to realize is that there are so many lives waiting for you to execute personal discipline because the quality of their life depends on it. Now, think about oh, it. that's good. Think about all of the people who have come in contact with you, bro, yep. and their lives have changed. Absolutely. And the people who depended upon them, their lives have changed. Absolutely. And so what you sow as a seed yeah. ends up a harvest in those who will also, watch this, mark the perfect man, it's a principle, mm -hmm. and model that discipline. There it is, right there. And, and, and to add to that, I always, I just told, God gave me this about two months ago. Yeah. He says, success has a line. Okay. And and we are all standing in a line, everybody. And what God does is he pick and chooses who need to cross that line. Mm -hmm. But what's on the other side of that line is the urgency that the people need for your gift. That's why there's some people who as a child, they get chosen because in that moment they need that child to give. There's people who've been in line for 40 years. You're just your gift is just being marinated because the urgency for your gift is is just waiting. Yeah. It's just waiting. And what happens is as we're in this line, people, they start getting impatient. People start looking at other people. Well, dang, he just got chose. She just got. No, 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 no. It's a special order for you. That's and right. what, so when it's your time, it's like that's what you said, a personal discipline. I had no idea what was on the other side of success. But when God called me, I seen the urgency. Mm -hmm. I see, And it's like, oh, I was homeless. In 2016, when I did the 40 speaking engagements and, and, and life was good and all of this stuff, full-time engineer, making some good mo money, December 1st, I said, God, I'm going into 2017 100% faithful to you, 100% serving, obedient, I'm ready. 
12 days later, a man walked to my door and, and he informed us that the landlord was not paying the back taxes on the house. Mm. He bought the house in auction. He said, y'all got to be on two weeks. In December 25th, 2016, we was moving out, my mom and I, in a blizzard. We had nowhere to go. 2017, I was homeless. Seven months. Seven months. I'm, I'm homeless. I couldn't find a house for whatever reason. I'm filling out applications. The house is reneging on me. The leases ain't going through. And it, it was in June. I'll never forget it. June 9th, I signed a lease. First time. I said, God, I knew if I stayed obedient, if I stayed prayerful, you would never renege on your word. You said, if I walk by faith and not by sight. I get in the house. Uh, that was the, the 9th. The 23rd. I walked in the house, everything was gone. They stole everything. My clothes, jewelry, my TVs, MacBooks, everything. I was like, wow, it's crazy. Yeah. So I was no, homeless I'm, I'm, for another yeah. two more months. Right. And, and July, I mean, in 2017. All at the same time, when I'm going through all of this, on the other side of it, I'm speaking at stadiums, sold out stadiums. I'm, my speaking career took its peak, but yet I'm still homeless. Right, I'm I'm getting standing ovations from thousands of people, and yet in my mind I'm like, man, they don't know I'm about to go sleep in my car. Right, every day I'm on Instagram, I'm giving motivation. I'm still every day. You don't have to look like what you're going through. Absolutely. And God told me in that moment, He said, Keon, you need to learn how to appreciate the little things, like like breathing, yeah, like being able to be mobile. And in that moment, I said, God, I just want to get better every day. Just one percent better in that moment. All so right. in the midst of going through some of the toughest times of my life, being homeless and him stripping me for everything, I found one of the greatest things I ever could have found in one percent better. Right. And it's like so I always tell people it's not about going through the storm. It's when you stop and you start looking at the wind. You start what? No, no, no. Keep going through. Peter was walking on water. When he was focused on God. Absolutely. The moment he started looking around was when he lost focus and he started to sink. That's where a lot of people are. You start focusing on your end goal and everything is great. And then such and such say you can't do it because they didn't. You can't go to college. Nobody in your family ever went to college. You can't start a business. Nobody. And what you're doing is inheriting their insecurities. And now you're starting to sink. And now you're like, God, save me. Like, oh, yeah, little faith. You, you already had the focus. You had the end goal. And it's like, that's what my life has been. And so I tell people, appreciate your process. Because in 2017, a lot of people didn't know. I, this is my first time sharing that story with people. Right. In 2017. And they was, key how you on everything. You everywhere speaking. You every day motivating. My spirit is still high. Yeah. And I'm sleeping in my car. I'm asking my brother, can I stay here tonight? I'm asking a friend, can I stay here tonight? Washing up, shop. 2017 was so crazy. I was supposed to release my book in 2017. But it was so much going on. I said, you know what? I'm going to let this year play out and put the in my book. I have a chapter called 2017. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just so was much happening. Challenge. I'm yeah. like, you know what? Let me get through this year and see what comes out of it. That had to be in there. And it had to be in there. So right. I'm like, you know, I'm experienced this. And and still trusting in God. And the place that I, I signed on March in April of 2007, not April, August 2017, a much better place, Oak Park, much nicer neighborhood. I'm like, I understand, God, what you was telling me to do because I got complacent. I started getting a little arrogant. I started feeling like, oh, because of my grit, my tenacious mentality, because of my hard work and skill, I'm here. No, 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 you're here for two reasons, God, grace and his mercy. Let's be very clear. That's it. And that's what he said, I, I, the Lord giveth. And the Lord takes us away. And hey, he had to strip me he from some things. Raises the one. Yes, sir. Brings down the, yeah. <laughs> and, and what's interesting is he gives you that uh, duplicit experience, right? Yeah. That I'm going to allow this, right? Mm -hmm. But in your private time, I need you to understand. Oh. And so this is what Philippians, when we get to I can do all things. Mm -hmm. But before that, <laughs> he says, I, I know how to be high. Mm -hmm. I know how to be low. Absolutely. I know how, you know, I'm well educated. Yep. I know how to speak to the con he, <laughs> he goes through all of this. Thing. Yes. He, he's, he goes through That's his good. 2017, right? Yeah. So That's he's like, real. hey, I've been here. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I know this. I know that. But here's the thing that stays constant. Mm. I know I can do right. all I know things. That. <laughs> Through Christ, that strengthens which strengthens me. Yes, me. So if I can have a 2017 and have these engagements like yeah. this, man, listen, when me and God are here yeah. and he, he speaks abundance, mm -hmm. you think I'm going to cower now? You're right. Absolutely. No, no, you don't, you, before you talk about me traveling the world yep. to speak, mm -hmm. like live through a 2017. That's it. Yeah, and, and, right. and that's where it's like every, every, I tell people, a chapter in your life yeah. doesn't tell the whole story. 
that, wait a minute. Push pause right there. <laughs> Go ahead and take notes. Put that in the comments. <laughs> That's it. A chapter in your life yeah. doesn't tell the whole story. The whole story. Because if, if I bought a book and I read the same chapter, you got 10 chapters, but they are the same. Mm. Think about what the review would be on that book. It's yeah. the stupidest book I ever seen. It's all the same thing. Ten chapters. Ten chapters. All the same. All the same. Same attitude. <laughs> same like, attitude. Nothing different. Right. So I tell people, listen, this is a chapter. Great. Get the lesson out of it. Because you can't go to the next chapter until you get the lesson out of it. That, The word testimony. Yes, sir. When you break that thing up, test. We all know what test is. Everybody go through tests. But the word money. Yeah, go I mean, the quality of good behavior. So you're going through a test to get a better behavior from going through the test. But a lot of people don't improve their behavior. The quality of their thinking don't change. Their actions don't change. Their words are not changing. So yet you're just going through tests and you're wondering why am I not growing? Because you're not getting better. You're not learning from what you're going through. So you're going to continue to be on that cycle. Like, oh, I met the, every guy I talk to or every girl I talk to treats me that well, well, you're talking to the same person with a different face. Right. Because you haven't learned. You're thinking, and I tell people, I say, so when you talk about a testimony, yeah. it's, oh, I've been through this, and then on the other side, this is what the outcome was. But a lot of people, they're not in that position yet to where they're learning. So I'm like, oh, God going to keep letting you go through that test. Oh, yeah. And to, until you pass it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that's what I've learned. Like, you want faith, bigger faith? Oh, you about to get a harder test. That's it. That, that's how it works. If he gave you the answers... And if there's an answer key, yeah, you don't need faith for that. You don't need it. So that's why I'm like, God, listen, I'm ready to increase my faith and be careful what you ask for. Because when I told him in 2016, he said, you sure? Are, yeah. you right. <laughs> Are you ready? Right. Are you ready? All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because I'm getting ready to put you some places where you can Absol be isolated <laughs> and alone. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And that's. What I was going through in 2010, these are the things that I've learned. And now I'm traveling all over the world. I'm getting booked left and right. Grateful God is doing an amazing thing in my life. But I keep reminding myself. Remember 2017. Right. Remember when you had to go through, when you had to learn. Mm -hmm. Judge not. No one. I look at everybody. Man, I'm just trying to get my stuff off the ground right now. I need a little help. Okay, let me, let me teach you how this works. Let me show you these gems. Let me give you... Man, thank you for that. I no problem. It's, it's pay it forward. Yeah, right. That that yeah. that's it. So my goal has been like, whatever I have, be a blessing to someone else. Right. And everything it is, God gave me this gift of influence. Great. How do you help other people? How how are you served? That's it. Like, and, and let's break it down, Keon. Yeah. So man, one of the things that you said that I think stands to be repeated mm -hmm. is that ministry yeah. is service. Yes. And so there are so many people who really desire to have a ministry, yeah. but they're not considering the service, Absolutely. right? <laughs> Absolutely. And then there are so many people who are just innately, naturally serving yeah. and don't realize what they really have is there a There you go. The ministry. ministry. Come on now. Yeah. And, 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 and so both sides. When, when, it's, and when it's all about self-gratification, God understands your heart. Absolutely. You can say whatever you want on Instagram. You, you can say whatever you want in front of the cameras that sound good. God know what your heart is. That's right. He, he, he know what your heart is. And I always tell you, I say, listen, make sure you're sincere. I'm, I'm, if I don't want to do it, I'll say no. Right. I'm sincere. But I'm not going to get in front of you and act this way as soon as the Instagram cut off or the lights cut off. I'm a dip. That's no, no, no. Yeah. You have to really be genuine. You have to serve. You have to make sure it's bigger than you. That's your mission in life. Right. God, will have, Jesus was on a mission. He knew where he had to go and what he had to do. Right. But along the end, he served his whole way. The whole way? The whole way. He yeah. just served. And that's how I, I live my life now. It's like, listen, you're going to come across so many people who you just supposed to serve. you just supposed to give. Oh, I'm I, don't, I don't need that back. Don't worry about it. Right. God will bless me on the back end. I'm good. Yes, sir. And then, like you said, there's other people who are just serving, and they don't think it's their ministry. So they think I got to do more. It's like, no, no, no. We are all like, I believe each and every one of us are like, and and he gave me this. This was probably about four months ago. Like, some lights shine brighter than others. Like me, I believe I'm an LED light. Not to say that I'm brighter than anyone, but because God called me to lead the masses, which means my light has to shine a little bit bigger. There are some lights that are 40 watt bulbs. You're not meant to be in the limelight of things, but when you get in a small room, Absolutely. you can change souls. Yeah. Right? You, you can heal people. Right. But what society does, they put that 40 watt bulb 
next to that LED and say, well, you're not shining bright enough. So now you're trying to operate in a space you was never designed to operate in. That's it. That's and it. that's what a lot of people are going through. So I tell people, no, no, no. People, Key, how you doing your thing? You Great, but, but so are you. So are you. So I always that's, flip that thing back on them, man. So, so check it. The responsibility of mm-hmm. the LED yeah. and the responsibility of the 40 yeah. is extremely different. Yep, absolutely. But both are necessary. But both are ne- oh, very necessary. Yeah, very necessary. Very necessary, because yes. Because if you don't have the 40 or the LED, mm-hmm. then that room will be dark. There it is. There, and there so it is. Yep. what we're supposed to do, mm-hmm. and hey man, listen, I told, it was a youth Sunday, I said, I know y'all believe that big timers were mm. the first ones that said, get your shine on, right? <laughs> I said, but let me tell you, they got that from the scripture. Absolutely. That is Isaiah 60 and 1. Absolutely. Arise and shine, yes. for thy light has come, <laughs> and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Yes, it That's is. That's what the Lord saying, yes. get your shine <laughs> Absolutely. on. And then he tells us, let your light so shine on, nah. that men might see your good works, yes. but not for you. Not for you that at all. He may, they may glorify your father, which is in heaven. Father. There so it is. yeah, man, listen. I don't care what rap lyric you talk about. If it's yes. talking about some type of motivation, inspiration, encouragement yes. for you to do well, that it's they pulled it from some scripture. Absolutely. You know. <laughs> and, listen, and and then too, I, I want to read this real quick. Oh yeah. I, I want to read this real quick. I've uh, I oh, posted we, something we yesterday, yeah. and it was talking about. I put it. It's called the the business lessons from the Bible. I saw that. You right. Yeah. And and, and it, this one um. It got it got a real great response because people have been like, man, I I've never heard or thought about it like that. And the, real quick, I'm gonna go through them and say, to serve is to be great. We talked about serving. Mm-hmm. There's a cure for worry because a lot of people get worried when the numbers don't look right, right? When the projections don't. But there's a cure for that too, right? Okay. That's in the Bible. Love conquers all. The Bible always say that love is greatest of all. Ask for what you need. You have not because you ask not. Judge not. And you will not be judged. Right? Keep your word. Like Jesus was a man of his word. Absolutely. When he said it, you already knew it was already done. Yes. Give in secret. I'm all about public giving. That's great. But there's some things that you just got to give on a private level. Right. That right. just shows you how, how close you are with God. Speak good words. And then the last thing is nothing is impossible if you have faith. And that blew my mind. You know, when I was thinking, oh, man, this this is great. Let me. Let me put that out there in the world. And so many people have been like, man, listen, that one right there, I'm ready. I'm applying it to my biz. And I'm like, because it's, it's all biblical. We all speak, oh, we all speak Bible. People right. tell you, humble yourself before life. No, no, no. Pride comes before destruction. Right. Right. So I, I always tell people, oh, I'm, I'm done complaining. I'm done. Yeah, because the Bible says do everything without grumbling and complaining. So right. my, I read scripture so that I can continue to connect it and make it relatable to a lot of people. Yeah. Who need to see it, who need to feel it, because most of us millennials now, um, you know, there's this huge war between spirituality and religion and all. I don't get into that. I'm like, listen, man, you, there's a religion and spirituality within your religion. If you you're I get it. But I always tell people, I say, listen, at the end of the day, we need to see things. That's how our our generation is, is teaching us. Mm-hmm. We need to see things. We need to see things. I'm like, but there's some things you just can't see. Yeah, there's, there's some things you gotta feel. That's right. You know, and I tell I meet people who don't believe all the time. And they try to talk to me about God is not the I say, listen, my God is not an intellectual conversation. <laughs> my God is revelation. I yes, felt sir. him. Go ahead. You know, and, and that's what I always I say, God talked to you too. Mm-hmm. Because the conscious and the unconscious will be judged. Everybody had a chance to run into God's to, to God. So I always tell people, I say, you have to make sure that your spiritual connection is in tune. And then the mental connection will be in tune. Then the physical con- everything. Just God is the source. Everything else is the resource. Absolutely. And that's how I live my life, man. Yeah, man, because the spirit realm is the causal realm. There it is. I yeah, love it. So, oh, that's yeah, good. So yes, sir. That, that's a Dr. Cindy Trim. Yeah. yeah. So spirit realm is the causal realm. So wow. if you ever want to make things happen, uh, Jesus even told him, he said, hey, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit mm. and they are life. Love so that. So when yeah. we talk about the word of God, man, we're talking about people like when they want to have arguments about think my thing is okay let's look at what's affecting yeah right absolutely okay so uh, just the same thing in the Bible I, I love it man so I read it sometimes from uh, sometimes a little mafioso mentality mm-hmm. kick in right <laughs> so one of my favorite places in the Bible is um, like Jesus was uh, and this is to anybody Jesus was a G all right he yep. was hands down <laughs> so here's the point where I'm getting ready to prove to you that he was that so he's before.
Pilate. Right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're getting ready to take him for trial. Pontius Pilate has the opportunity uh, to do the right thing mm-hmm. in the estimation. But this is part of Jesus's process. Yep. Right. So Jesus talks to Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate comes up on him. This is how I'm going to urbanize it, ebonize it, however you mm-hmm. want to say it. <laughs> and Pontius Pilate is like, yo, bro, do you know who I am? Mm. Yes, like, sir. I have your life yep. in my hands. Mm-hmm. Jesus, I picture him looking up just kind of, you know, <laughs> as if he was wearing glasses, but just kind of above the eyelid. He said, hm, you don't take my life. <laughs> I, I lay that. my life down mm. only to pick it back up again. <laughs> oh, shut it down. Shut it down, right? And, yeah. and it's the same thing, man, when you saw the standoffs in the Old Testament. Yep. Where they're like, oh, man, our gods are going to do this, and then they do it, and then God that answers by fire <laughs> shoom, licks up the water, licks mm-hmm. up the rock, licks yep. up the wood. Absolutely. Right? And yep. so it's one of those things about looking what's effective. Yeah, And Scripture Agreed. says that the kingdom of God is not without observation. Absolutely. So the signs, the wonders, the miracles that happens in the life of the believer is to compel those who don't believe Absolutely. that God is real. Absolutely. So, man, we don't man, have to argue good. about it. Listen, yeah, we don't. Well, I know, I know, we know too many people that's been physically healed, yep. too many people that's been delivered from yep. all type of uh, physical and spiritual afflictions. Absolutely. Like, all I'm going to say, Absolutely. If, if somebody were to ask you, does working out, does it work for you? Mm-hmm. All you got to do is hit that bicep. Or, like, as you were doing, on, wait a minute, that tricep. That tricep, <laughs> that tricep. yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so, man, talk to me. One uh, percent university, man. Yes. Tell me about. Tell me about one percent university. So, I, I created the one percent better university because, as I'm traveling all over the world, I get to talk to so many people who, um, they want to get better in their business. They yeah. want to get better. Um, personally, professionally. So I created an online university where I pro- help I provide you with tools and resources so you can create your own execution strategy mm-hmm. for two things. Number one, to become a professional. Okay. And then number two, to gain respect in your profession. Because what I've learned is a lot of people don't see the success they want is because they're not professionals. And that's from understanding your business. Most people don't understand their business, mm-hmm. like speaking. I was speaking for the first two years and didn't know that there was a speaker's business. I thought, hey, you just get paid every time you not when you're trying to build out your business, you know. So what I've learned is now I help people build the back end of the business. I teach them about how to go about that, making sure that your email marketing is where it needs to be, make oh, sure yeah. that your branding is on point, making sure that you understand different resources and tools on how you can get certain things done for your business. Mm. That's number one. And then number two is like, well, to gain respect. In your business, you got to put in the reps. You got to have credentials. Men That's lie, right. women lie, credentials don't. Absolutely. Right? At yeah. the end of the day. Right. So I teach them the importance of free because free is never free. That's right. When you understand the value you get from it. As a speaker, if I get booked for free in front of 300 students, number one, that's 300 lives that I, I can change. Absolutely. Number two, I get pictures, which is always good for marketing capital. Three, I get video content that I continue to put out here in the world. Four, I got the entire principal or the organizer who say, wow, this brother's real sharp. Five, I have products and services that, oh, I do have a book that's called Healing the Living Day. How many of you all would like it? Of course, everybody want a book. Oh, I also have a nonprofit organization, and we have a mission where we adopt a school. Right. So now if you're going to buy 250 books or so, we adopt a school, I'm also adopting fam. So when you understand free is never free. That's right. And you're putting in the work and you're getting the credentials, now you start to gain that respect because it's like, wow. Yeah, Mr. Clinton, we see that uh, from your one pager you've been featured on this and Channel 2 and Fox Fox 2 and Channel 4 and, and you in Speakers Magazine and you got all... Absolutely. Absolutely. So I I teach people, one, how to become a professional so that you can move the right way. And then, two, how to gain that respect in your profession. Because as I tell people, when you when you're respected in the game, you'll get paid top dollar. That's right. E.T. has a a big, bold statement on his contact me page that say um, it's one hundred thousand dollars to book me. And real big, bold letters bigger than that. bold Right. It It say my fees are non negotiable. And the reason why is because he understands that you got to respect me. I'm E.T. I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. That's what having the respect allows you to do. Right. Right. Instead of people saying, I want you to come out and speak or host or whatever. And can you do it for the love? Well, no, I love you. I but I also love, love going back home because I pay my bills. Absolutely. I also love being able to provide for my family and putting food. So when you have that level of respect and you, you, you gained it through your credentials, 
So that's what I show people how to do. And um, it, it's been very well. Uh, first class, we just had it. Um, a fall class of 2019. I'm opening up registrations probably this month for our cl- first class of 2020. Okay. We're doing four, four quarters. Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. And my goal is, and, and this is it's for millennials, it's for seasonal professionals, it's for those who are looking to start, don't know where to go. We break every piece of it down. Man. And, and the way that I'm teaching it is like, I want to make sure that you have all the tools and the resources you need to go ahead and do what it, no matter what discipline you're in. There's principles that you should always live and breathe by when you're talking about business. So that's what the 1% Better University is all about. Oh, man, that's excellent. You know, and I think it's so timely because as different markets open up, yeah. the definition of a professional shifts. Absolutely. But nobody tells you that the principles remain the same. Absolutely. Right. So, yes. so, <laughs> so when, when uh, especially working in a school, uh, a lot of the ideas people may bring is, you know, people talk about shirt and tie and, mm-hmm. you know, that may be good if you're going for corporate positions yeah. or things of that nature. Mm-hmm. But now entrepreneurs and people are, you know, wearing hoodies. Absolutely. And yeah. so, Absolutely. so so here's the thing, though. So people, they, they, they put that qualifier out there, yep. right? But they don't tell you that the person that's wearing the hoodie uh, still has operating systems and principles. And Absolutely. Back end, right? And, and, and yeah. then, too, typically the person that's wearing a hoodie, is is in a higher position because they matriculated. They went, they started with the suit and tie. Yes, you know, I, I'm I'm a shoe and tie guy. You yeah. know, no, so yeah, for I, me, I, I see you, you know? keep it a little saucy. Oh yes, yeah, sir, yeah, yeah, always. Yeah. Oh wait a minute, I, I'm dating myself. Got the, got, I said sauce. So, <laughs> so we went from we went from sauce to drip, the right? Drip, no. So okay, got the drip, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's it. I always tell people, um, I say, listen, what the reason why being a professional is so important, right? Because in our age, as millennials, we like to substitute professionalism with, oh, I'm just being myself. Right. Let's be very clear. Professionalism comes with a certain standard. No matter where you are, no matter what you do, no matter what profession you're in, you can't just walk like E.T. People look at E.T., he got the hat, he got the... E.T. been doing this for over 14 years. Absolutely. Yeah, like, he, he put in reps for over 14 years. He built a brand for over 14 years to be able to do just that. So I'm I, when I always tell people, I say, listen, put in the reps. But being a professional is how do you move? How do you handle your business? When you're in the room, are you articulating yourself? Are you pitching the right way? Because a lot of people don't have their pitch down pack. They don't have – you should know what your niche is. When you ask people, I think one of the most – the hardest questions to ask somebody in this world is – who are you? Oh, absolutely. They they will tell you where they went to school at. They'll right. tell you what they do, where they work. They'll tell you about all these organizations and accolades. No, no. But who are you? Who who are you? Strip away all the other stuff. And that's what that's the very first the very first session we have is who are you? Who are you? I need to know. Right. Because if I if you can't tell me who okay. Then you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. And then if you don't know who you are, how do you expect the world to know who you are? And then how do you respect them to respect you the way you want to be respected if you don't even know who you are? Right. So we start breaking down and diving deep from our very first session. And it, when I say it's life changing, they say, wow. Right. All of the students like, hey, I never thought about it like that. I never went this deep. It's yeah. okay. That's, that's what we're here for. Man, listen. So what would happen uh, and you might be listening. You might say, man, listen, I, I have established success. Mm-hmm. I understand professionalism. But what Keon just said struck a chord with me. Uh, I've built this life on the false notion of who I am yeah, or who yeah. others wanted me to be or who I thought I was at the time. Mm-hmm. Like This is another prime opportunity to to rebrand yourself, to yeah. re-image yourself, to re imagine the possibilities that exist within who you are and so hey man i like to say it like this their life is about foundation and fluidity right Mm -hmm. so there are some foundational things about me that just will not change my core beliefs right oh yeah so you work out i'm gonna use that Mm -hmm. analogy so my core the stronger my core is right and there's there are some things about me that must be fluid from yes. level to level. I can hear yes. Bishop Jakes in my ear, and he's going like this. He's saying, you have to have the nimbleness of thought and the liquidity of mm-hmm. mind to be able to go. Right? So, yeah. yeah, you know, that's <laughs> when he starts doing like this. But, yeah, man. Uh, but I love what you're doing, man. We got about 10 minutes left. 
Uh, man, you've been praying for yeah. uh, the nation. Yes. Uh, you've been a part of a movement of the prayer for the city. Yeah. Uh, man, you got the 1% Better University. Yes, sir. You're helping people execute upon life in ways that they didn't envision. You're yeah. transforming. Uh, you might even be bringing together some relationships because these a- body listen, goals have. Absolutely. Yeah, that's have. right. <laughs> <laughs> True. I got the right. So listen. Years, man. Hey, so man, next time we going into 1% Better University dating. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> Say, no, listen, yeah, no, I'm joking. coming soon, yeah, right? Coming soon, <laughs> right? Hey, do you want to take your dating life? To- no, <laughs> no, but these are, these are, I'm joking now, but this is a real thing. Yeah. Uh, when you believe more in yourself. Absolutely. When you apply the personal self-discipline that's needed. Yep. When you begin to answer the question, the same question God asked you. Yeah. Is the one that he poses to anyone he wants to use. Absolutely. Are you ready? Are you ready? And, and I tell people. We we don't we don't look at ourselves enough. Mm. The average person glimpse they, they 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 have a glimpse of themselves twice a day. Number one, when they wake up and go brush their teeth, and they're not really looking at themselves because they're probably wiping the crust out their eye. Absolutely. And then number two, when they're putting on clothes, and they're not looking at themselves, they're looking at the clothes. Mm. So when you walk in a room and people are staring at you, that's why a part of you becomes insecure. A part of you feels some type of way because you don't know what they're looking at. Every day I look at myself. I talk to myself. Keon, you're a king. You deserve this life. Yeah. You, you work for this. You know, you're going to go out in front of the opposition. They're going to tell you all these things, but you will not allow them to taint your vision because you've affirmed it in yourself and you know who you are. But as I'm talking to myself, I'm watching how my mouth moves when I talk. I'm watching my face. I'm looking at me. So when I walk in a room, I know what you're looking at. Right. I, look, I already look. I got the first view of this. Yeah, I was right? impressed like, before I left. <laughs> you're right. you know so, what I'm saying? And no. it's like, <laughs> but what that does is it, it showed me, it's like, oh, you are who you say you are. Yeah. You, you, you know what they're looking at. You know how you look. You know. So now you can't diminish my confidence. You can't tell me I'm something that I know I'm not. Like, if somebody walked in here and told me, Keon, you, you're, you're fat and out of shape. I laugh. Right. Because I know for a fact I'm in shape and I'm far from that, right? Yeah. So what why is it that when someone say something about you that's antagonistic, that's negative, a little pessimistic, why do that person get upset about it? Why do they feel a piece of you believe it? A piece of you believe it. A piece that. of you believe it. It that's can be it. small, but that's right. Piece. So I tell people you gotta build that confidence within you first before you go out into the world and project. Because a lot of people, like you said, they built this character, this image of what they think success looks like. What happens when they stop working? Absolutely. And Will Smith was just talking about this the other day. Yeah, I saw it on Man. Uh, the uh, Breakfast Club. He was just, and, and it was powerful. It was yeah. so powerful because so many people was like, success, and even for me, I come from the hood. My thing was, go to a bright future. I don't know what that looks like. Right. So as I started researching, I'm like, oh, this is how it should look like. This is, And I found myself indirectly doing what they were doing. It wasn't like I was trying to be like someone else, but I was painting this picture. So now I say, don't paint the perfect picture. Paint the progress picture. Okay. Right? Yeah. Like, show you through everything. Yeah. And let people see every level. It's level one. I was here. So when I started doing my show, my prep for my show, I, every day I posted a workout video. Right. Four months straight. So people were seeing me like, dude, we see you. So when I won, it wasn't a shock. It was like, you know, you put in the work. Yeah. We see you every day. He and should be. He, <laughs> if he doesn't win, it's, yeah. A, yeah, it's a problem. And that's right. it. And so that's what I tell people. Like, sh- your progress every day, getting a little bit better. That's what 1% better is. Every day. Right. I'm going to wake up today at 5 o'clock because I need to get, I need, be, I need to be more productive. Okay. And then after 5 o'clock come, he's like, I need to be a little more. I'm going to get up at 4.30. Because I know that if I get up at 4.30, then the average person get up at 7.30. I got you by three hours. And then if I times that by seven, that means in a week I got you by a whole day. So if I got a whole day up on you in productivity, that means that my success is going to be higher. That right. means that my conversion rate is going to be higher. That means that my wins are going to be higher. So when I had started to understand that, how to get this mindset of getting 1% better, in everything, I need to be a better brother. I need to call my brother today because I, I didn't call him last week. I need to make sure I call him three times a week because, okay, then that three times turn to four. You got 1% better. Right. Right? And and the power of one, that's what, it be, that's what this evolved into. So this year you will be hearing a lot about the power of one, one step, one decision, one opportunity, or one mistake. 
can change the trajectory of your life. Absolutely. And the power of one. One is big. Right. One can be big as you want it to be. It can be as small as you need it to be. And that's what that's that's what one percent better is about. That's how I live my life, and that's what I tell everybody that I come in contact with. Listen, every day, get one percent better. Oh yeah. yeah. This is not something that sounds good. No, no. I ask myself that in the morning. Mm-hmm. Keon, how do you plan to get one percent better today? And then when I get when I before I go to bed, Keon, how did you get one percent better today? Because I want to make sure that how I wanted to and how I did, great. Because if I wanted something and I executed it, then that's a good day for me. That's a good day. That's a real good day. Right. And that's what I challenge people to do every single day of their lives. Well, that's good, man. So listen, I'm here with Keon Clinton, and we need you to get 1% better. Yes, sir. Keon, where can they connect with you, brother? Yes, all social media platforms, Keon Clinton, that's K-E-Y-O-N, Clinton like the president. That's social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. I also have a website, KeonClinton.com. You can go on there if you want to book me to speak, anything like that. You want to join the 1% Better University, feel free to reach out to me. I look forward to connecting with everybody. And I just want to thank you for having me on this show, man. Listen, oh, yeah, man. Love Absolutely. who you are and what you do, man. It's, it's an honor. Hey, It's truly an honor, man. Thank you. We are in this transformational work together, brother. Yes, sir. And, uh... The Bible says this, that he said, you shall know my disciples by their love. Mm -hmm. And so when you see other people impacting lives for the better and seeing God work through them, man, our collaboration, I put it like this. And, you know, for me and for us, it's all about the word. So if one can put a thousand to flight. There it is. Two can put mm-hmm. 10,000. 10, so yes, sir. I like that exponential growth. <laughs> Absolutely. That, you know, yeah, yeah. We're we talking about an extra 9,000. Yeah. So listen, man, uh, God bless you and all you Thank do. You. We have about a couple minutes left, man, about two or three minutes. Bless okay. us with a prayer, and then we're going to go ahead Absolutely. and call it a night. Dear gracious and eternal Father, we come to you today, Lord, thanking yes, you for life, thanking you for fellowship, Lord, yes, thanking you for brotherhood, Lord. We we understand that if you decided to do nothing else for our lives, Lord, we will still praise you for the rest of our lives because yes, you've done enough. You've done enough, Lord. Right now, I'm thanking you, Lord, for this king who you've put on his heart to create a platform to give other people a voice right now, God. We understand that we we are not perfect, but you are perfect, and we are perfectly fine with that, Lord. Yes, so in our unworthiness, Lord, we thank God for your unconditional love. We thank you for your faithfulness and your obedience to us, even when we can't find it in us to be obedient and faithful to you right now, God. Yes, and I'm asking anyone who listens to this podcast, Lord, anyone that listens to any episode, they get blessed, yes, and they Lord. receive an unexpected and a supernatural word from you, God. And, yes, and if anybody who needs healing, anybody who needs deliverance, Lord, anybody. Yes, who needs a, a breakthrough in any way, whether it's mentally, physically, financially, or emotionally, Lord, I'm asking right now that you intercede yes, and Lord. you remind them just how almighty that you are, Lord, because we're humans. Yes, and Lord. sometimes we need just a reminder, God. And, and the best reminder is the reminder that comes from love, yes, a reminder that comes from peace, a reminder that comes from a place that we can truly trust. And all three of those things lies within you, God. Yes, and as we continue to move forward throughout the week, Lord, I'm asking that you bless us to and from. Bless the people we come in contact with bless the cars that we get in bless the lights that we pass and i pray that right now that anything that the enemy has in store that you rebuke it right now in In the the name name of jesus Jesus. lord we understand that with you on our side nothing can harm us no weapon formed against us shall prosper lord so continue to do what you always do and that's be god (laughs) and we're grateful for it we ask these things in your most precious son jesus christ's name amen amen All right, so listen, I always tell you that your future is not behind you. It is not before you. It is within you. Again, thank you, my brother, (laughs) for being on the show. Appreciate it. And listen, I'm going to end it with the same question that God asked Keon. Are you ready? God bless you.